Hello and welcome to Oxygen Sports. You know, there's some sports we can all relate to and be a part of. And then there's some we can only sit back and cheer on as we admire those athletes who make it look easy. Well, today we look at a sport we can all relate to, volleyball. At just about every picnic or barbecue, volleyball is there to play. And we can play it indoors, outdoors, and even at the beach. Well, today we travel to Switzerland. Remember how there was always that one hot shot? Well, these women you're about to see, that's who they were. Except one difference, they can back it up. And over and over again, too. Heather Cox is in beautiful Montreal to tell us more. I'm on the Team Galati, owned by Galati Yacht Sales, run by four brothers. One of the brothers, Chris Galati, had a diving accident over 15 years ago, which led to spinal cord injury. It hasn't stopped him. He's one of the best fishermen around, just ask him. And he's also captain of this 50-foot Viking convertible sport fisher. There are 45 cars entered here in today's Trans Am race in mid-Ohio. Mostly made up of Mustangs, then Camaros, then Corvettes, and a couple of Pontiacs, too. So why do they call this series the Trans Am Series? Connie is caught up with Tommy Dreesey. Connie? Yeah, Tommy is just doing awesome this year. This is his first year of professional racing, and also he's leading in the points with Rookie of the Year, and you've been keeping your nose clean all year long, Tommy. This must be a dream come true. Well, it really is a dream come true, you know. Connie Willis. Thanks, Calvin. It is going to get up to about 94 degrees today. Look at it on the grid already, 138 degrees. Now, once this race gets going, these cockpits can get up to 185 degrees inside. If you take a look at Randy, he's got sweat all over the place. He, thank goodness, can cope with the heat a little bit better because he's got himself a cool suit. Hopefully, that will stick through for the rest of the race. What we're hoping by the end of the race is to fry up a few of these bad daddies on his car when he gets back. And, Paul, I'm in the midst of those fans that you're talking about. Right in the middle of Johnson Controls, there's about three to 400 of them here right now. And, of course, this whole weekend, there's over 150,000 people. So we got a good fan out here. Now, Holland is about 30 minutes away from here. That's the hometown of Johnson Controls. And 40 minutes away is where Paul's from in Lansing. So this is his home track. The pressure's on Paul to be number one. Can Paul do it? Are we behind him? But the battle for first place comes down to this, Cuba versus Russia. Cuba dominates the world of women's volleyball and has won every match in this tournament. Russia will fight to the end after losing the gold to Cuba at the Sydney Olympics. So who will it be this time? Russia, led by Nikolai Karpol, a coach famous for his boisterous approach. Or will it be Cuba, led by the legendary Eugenio Jorge and Luis Felipe Calderon, both known for their smoother style? Well, let's go back to the Omnisport Arena in Montreux to see these great coaches and great players do what they do best. It has never been attempted before. Two people are going to jump out of a plane, hold on to tow ropes, and actually ski behind the plane at 8,500 feet in the air. Hi, I'm Connie Willis. This is something we've decided to do here with IDARE. You give me the best point of view, as we always do. But we have put a camera on the front of the bike here to check out Nick's face right before he goes into the tunnel and then as he's going through the tunnel of fire. We also have another camera down here to help you see every angle possible. Right here on the side, this is called a lipstick camera. In inside this pipe and it's going to give you the point of view of the motorcycle going through the tunnel of fire and hopefully these things won't melt. Well make sure you're plenty far away when they light that thing on all right? <laughs> I'm going to be close enough to keep my hands warm other than that I'll be far away. Right now we've got some speed trials going on that's Pat also testing out of the line of danger. Soon we're going to be dropping all 10 of the cars again this is for testing before the big event. I'm with aerial coordinator Roger LaRue. Now this stunt may look like a piece of cake to you, but actually it's probably the most dangerous one we have done so far. Nick, it's your time, the tunnel of fire. We've been talking about it for a while and now this is it. Are there any concerns or are you all set? We have to talk about the staterooms here on the Samantha Lynn. There's six of them. All the furniture in each one is made of teak, even the inlays. Each of the rooms has its own bathroom in marble also each one of them have their own walk-in closet. It's so homey and so mansion-like, you wouldn't even know you were on a yacht except for the portholes. The Lazara people thought of everything when they designed the legacy, the modern conveniences of home, 
push of a button, and a 40-inch plasma screen television set instantly. And what's great about these is it takes up no room, and that's very important on a boat. We've got DSS, satellite, and DVD all for you right here. And you know how much this thing might cost you? Uh, four times the amount of a regular 40-inch screen. This is nice. Hey, it's TNN's Wild Wild Web Week. Hi, everybody. I'm Dot Com. Coming up on the Winston, you can have a live chat with a pit member or see our live webcast with the in-car cameras, all connecting to country.com. Stay tuned and get connected. It was the second race in the Trans Am series that Dorsey Schrader came in second. The third race in our in-car camera, well... You didn't do as well. Tell me about that car, because I know you were happy about the first one. We lived. That's what we did through the second race. Um, and that's just kind of a really brief look at the Samantha Lynn. In fact, we could spend an entire half hour showing you this boat. It's really, really something. We did spend a half hour showing you the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. Great stuff. But we only touched the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to show you. And so we have another whole show coming up a week from now. We hope you'll join us then. But for now... I'm Connie Willis. I'm John Nicholson. Thanks for joining us. And so long from Fort Lauderdale. Thousands of kids have the same dream. They want to be a race car driver. But it's Chris's focus and his experience that have earned him respect on a circuit full of veteran drivers. I'm with Super Joe Reed right now. You're all set and ready to go. All set and ready to go. We hope you enjoyed watching these elite teams battle it out at the Montreal Volley Masters 2001. They've taken the friendly game of volleyball to a whole new level with their grace and power. If you'd like more information on this show or any other women's sport, check out our website at oxygen.com. And thanks for watching. We leave you with images of the closing ceremonies in Montreal. Look closely. You just might see the next volleyball great. Right now, let's get to work and go down to Connie Willis and Rich Lures in the pits. Thanks, Art. We are looking forward to an exciting race today. Nearly 50 boats, eight different classes, and a hot day. We've got our expert, Rich Lures, here. What do we expect to see? Thank you, Connie. We expect to see speed. Speed, speed, demon speed. Calm seas, lots of horsepower, a world-class fleet. Carlos and Charlie, two boats? Carlos and Charlie's two boats. Top boat in modified and one of the fastest boats in open. We've also got a rookie with us today. A rookie woman driver. We're going to watch her very closely. Her husband is competing in a higher class. <laughs> Thank you very much. Art, let's go to you. You know, Bill, this could have been a very, very big, big day for Dale Jarrett. He won the Daytona 500 and the Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte earlier this year. And now he was eligible for the Winston Million Sunday at Darlington. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out as well as he planned. Jared hit the wall while leading and was never able to recover. Jeff Gordon ended up winning the race. Jared limped home 10th, minus the million bucks. Welcome back to APPA Offshore Powerboat Racing. Art Eggman, Connie Willis, and Rich Lures. You know, Connie has done some comparison shopping lately. What do you think of APBA Offshore Racing? Wouldn't you love to race one of these boats? The speed, the prestige, shoot, the pure fun of it. Well, let's see if what's in my pocket can do the trick. Ah, uh, don't think so. Let's look in your pocket to see if you can do it. That may put his race in a little different perspective. And for more on that, let's go to Connie Willis. I'm with G.J. Minnan, who is up for Rookie of the Year, and he is second on the grid, which also means he is up for possibly winning the race. G.J., the question is, will you sacrifice Rookie of the Year to win the race today? Well, I don't want to sacrifice anything. I, I definitely want to win this race. This is an old training and departure base of World War II, and of course, home of the ever so famous oldest endurance race in all of North America. 12 hours of Sebring. I get to be with the race coordinator right here that everybody knows. It's Charlie Earwood, also known as the godfather of Sebring. <laughs> You've been around for quite a while. Can you tell me some of the changes we can expect in the next millennium? Okay, you can see right now where, where we're sitting here that this used to be the, uh, the pitch structures were here. They're torn down now. The other member of our telecast crew is Connie Willis. Connie? Thank you, Art. Mark, hi, everybody. It seems that it's very common around Kenton Arrows, Maryland, to have beautiful days. Blue, clear skies and no humidity? Can't beat that, can you? In fact, it makes for a beautiful view of Annapolis on the other side of Kenton Arrows. We're going to talk about that a little later on, as well as individual safety for the crew members. And I'm going to show you a specialty of Maryland. I think you'll like that. Stick around. Back to you guys. Uh, of course, Mosport is located uh, just a little bit north and east of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and it has a tremendous history, and a lot of the greatest Canadian drivers came from here. Connie Willis has a look. As you walk down Pit Lane here in Mosport, you can feel the magic and the history of this racetrack. And it's racetracks like this that have helped race some of Canada's best 
race car drivers. Like kart standout Paul Tracy, Trans Am veteran Ron Fellows, and current IRL points leader Scott Goodyear, and a legendary family by the name of Villeneuve. You know this bleach blonde Jacques Villeneuve, the Indy 500 winner, the 1995 kart champion, and the 1997 Formula One world champion. But how about this young wonder's father, the legendary Jill Villeneuve. Jill was one of the greatest masters of car control to ever drive. And just up the St. Lawrence Seaway from here, there's another road circuit named after this electric driver. This Villeneuve is the younger Jacques namesake and uncle. He won a kart race in 1985 and was the 1983 Can-Am champion and even proved his genetic driving skills on the snow. The Villeneuve tradition of winning continues.